Chainsaw, dude. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, hello. My name is Carly Gifford, and on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I upload a sit-down video talking about literally whatever I want because this is YouTube, and we have the freedom to do that. Um, let's see. Normally, I do true crime stuff. But today, we're not talking about true crime. We are talking about something much more interesting. Every now and then, I do throw in, like, a vlog-type video because that's what I originally did on YouTube, and then true crime started doing well. So, I mean, you know, just got to follow the views, especially if you want to make this your full-time gig and move out of your parents' house. Um, okay, so I also used to show you guys, like, what I was drinking while I was recording videos today. I'm drinking out of my Barbie Pink Stanley. It is just water because I don't drink enough water. I am just someone that does not crave water, so I have to force myself to drink it. So every couple of months, I like to buy myself a new water bottle because just got to feed that delusion that a new water bottle is going to get me to drink some water. Um, oh, okay, so a little fun story. I went to Dick's Sporting Goods just to look at Stanley's, uh, and I walked in and I'm kind of eyeing this, like, gorgeous pink one, which, keep in mind, I never was a pink girly until I saw the Barbie movie, and then I was like, you know what? The way they did that movie just made me love pink. Uh, so anyways, one of the employees came over to me and was like, hey, that one hasn't been released online yet. We got it early, so it's gonna sell out, and I was like, Girls say less, so I bought it. I did get the smaller one, though, because, you know, we love an economic queen that, that saves money. I saved, like, $5 on it. Anyways, that's pretty much all I have to preface this video with. <laughs> that was kind of a lot. Sorry. Let's get into today's video. Okay, so I think we all kind of know who Julia Child was. She was an absolute unit in the kitchen. She was most notably known for... Um, her, like, debut cookbook, which was The Art of French Cooking. Um, she was the French chef, which was, like, that was her TV show. She also did Baking with Julia, which was a TV show that she produced. And each episode, it would feature one pastry chef or baker that did a tutorial of, like, pro techniques that just everyday people could do in their own kitchens at home. Uh, she also had shows like Julia Child and Company, Julia Child and More Company, and Dinner at Julia's. Those were shows that she had in the 70s and 80s. But today, we are not going to talk about cooking with Miss Julia because she had a far more interesting life than any of us realized, I think. Miss Julia actually had a bigger impact on the world than just teaching us how to cook. And so today, that is what we are going to talk about because I think it is so incredibly cool that she did something so much bigger than just cooking, but we don't hear about it. So we do have to do a little bit of backstory on Miss Julia. She was born August 15th, 1912 in Pasadena, California to John McWilliams Jr. and Julia Caroline Weston. So, okay, her mom's name was Julia and her name was Julia. It's giving Lorelai Gilmore, Rory Gilmore. If you watch Gilmore Girls, you know what I'm talking about. So her dad, John, graduated from Princeton and he was a land manager. Her mom, Julia, was a paper company heiress. Her dad was Captain Byron Weston, who founded the Weston Paper Company in 1863. The company is currently a subsidiary of the world-renowned Crane Paper Company, which I swear I've actually heard of. Uh, it provides the paper for the U.S. dollar, according to Harvard University. Crane bought Weston in 1956, but then I also read that in 1998, Weston Paper was purchased by the International Paper Company for $232 million in stock. The Weston Paper Company did $220 million in sales as of 1990, or in, sorry, not as of, but in 1997. So back then, I don't even know what that would be like in today's money. Uh, needless to say, the childs were very well off and Julia actually grew up with a cook. Her mom didn't cook, she didn't cook. It was something that she didn't learn until later on in life. So the Western Paper Company though, I do have to say, I don't actually know what they got for it, what they sold it for. It, I got kind of some conflicting information about that. Like, I don't know 
if it is still used for U.S. currency. I guess that one of the companies it was sold to also was known for providing paper for, like, your social security card. Um, and then one of the companies that it was sold to supposedly quit making paper. So I don't really know what ended up happening to it. They had like 1,400 employees at one point. So it was a very prominent company. And so, yes, it's easy to see how well off they were and how Julia did grow up with a very nice cushy life. Julia played tennis, golf, and basketball as a young girl in school. As an adult, she was six foot too. So she was a very uh, tall child, like she was above average in the height department. She attended the Polytechnic School from 4th to ninth grade, and then she went to the Katherine Branson School, which at the time was a boarding school. After high school, Julia went to Smith College, which is where her mom and her aunt also attended. In, it's a private liberal arts school for women. I think it still is today as well. Correct me if I'm wrong. In 1934, she graduated with a major in history. After she graduated, Julia moved to New York City and worked for a copywriter in the advertising department. I also heard that she worked for a furniture company, but then she got let go because of some uh, mistake she made with like some paperwork. It, I There wasn't much on it. There isn't a ton on like her early life, although while she was at Smith College, she was a grass cop, which was an organization of students that would try to keep other students from walking on the grass at the college and ruining it. I thought that was really funny. So it didn't work out at the, um, at the copyright place, copywriter that she was working for. I believe it was, what is it, Houghton miffin or something like that it was that company that she was working for so it didn't work out but even like back then she really wanted to be a novelist which you know we know later on she comes out with a lot of great cookbooks so she i mean she kind of achieved her goals she didn't write a novel but i mean a cookbook come on it wasn't until she actually married her husband, Paul, that she became interested in cooking. Paul's family was very interested in food. They were kind of foodies. I believe it, Paul was actually French, which is how Miss Julia became the French cook. Um, but she didn't end up meeting Paul until after World War II, which is something that we are going to get into right now. So in 1942, Julia joined the Office of Strategic Services, the OSS. She joined the OSS after she was rejected by the Women's Army Corps for being too tall. She was also rejected by the US Navy's waves for the same reason. Julia started out as a typist at the headquarters in DC, but since she had more education and experience, she was given more responsibilities. She was made a top secret researcher and was working directly for the head of the OSS, General William J. Donovan. One of Julia's jobs was to type over 10,000 names onto white note cards to keep track of officers. For a year, she worked at the OSS Emergency Sea Rescue Equipment Section in DC as a clerk, and then as a and then as an assist as an assistant, oh, tongue twister, to the developers who were trying to de develop a shark repellent. Shark repellent was actually needed to make sure that curious sharks didn't set off OSS underwater explosives. Um, so these explosives would have been used to try to get uh, like German U-boats in the water and like submarines and get them before they were able to land an attack on any other country. Child's solution was to experiment with cooking various concoctions as a shark repellent. I don't know who this quote was from, but I guess that cooking and finding some type of food that sharks don't like was actually her idea. The concoctions were sprinkled in the water near the explosives to repel the sharks. The repellent that she helped develop is actually still in use today. From 1944 to 45, Julia was posted to Candy Ceylon, which is now Sri Lanka. I know I pronounced that wrong, sorry. Her duties were registering, cataloging, and channeling a great volume of highly classified communications for stations in Asia. Later, she moved to Kunming, China, and that is where she got the emblem of Mir notorious civilian services as head of the registry of the OSS Secretariat. Julia's OSS records were declassified in 2008. Other files are not available online, but Julia's are. You can find those. I will have a link down below for you guys if you want to look into it. I thought it was so cool. This 
like entirely different life that she had before she became known as the French chef. She was stationed in a lot of other locations as well. Like I said, she was in France, that's where she met Paul, her husband. The two of them actually never had children, which at the time would have been kind of odd for a woman to not have kids. I don't know if it was a personal choice that she made or if there were other reasons maybe for it, but that is kind of the life of Julia Childs before she became Julia Childs. I thought that this was so cool and it's amazing that she, a woman, was able to develop something that we still use today. It's kind of like Hedy Lamarr. She was an actress in the 50s in Hollywood. She essentially helped us to develop the technology for Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So we have her to thank. So Gotta give it up for women in STEM. They are out here making huge changes for society to better our lives. And Julia Child was one of them. If you guys found this video to be interesting, please like this video as well as subscribe to my channel. I don't always do videos like this. Like I said, normally I do true crime stuff, but I just thought this was such an interesting kind of niche thing that it would be a lot of fun to talk about. And I'm sure I'll do more videos like this in the future. But as of right now, that is it for me. I hope that you guys, like I said, found this interesting and decided to come back on Friday for another video. Bye, guys.